Hello everyone, today we're gonna to take a look at the XI25 Pro from Out of the RC. And instead of just starting in my typical manner, I'd like to refer to a comment left on the Out of the RC XI20 Pro. Derek writes, blown away by this quad. Tried a two-incher in the past, the Z20, and was very underwhelmed. Bad flight times, handled poorly in the wind, underpowered if you wanted to fly aggressively, etc. Gave the XI20 a try just because I'd heard good things about it, and wow, I was pleasantly surprised. Acro's better than any ducted quad I've had, good flight times, and seems to handle the wind reasonably well for such a small quad. Of all the sin whoops that I've tried, this one feels like it flies the least like a ducted whoop. And this brings to point how important the comment sections are, at least in the videos that I like to create. And whether your experience is good or bad, I like to hear follow-ups from people that took their own money to buy one, whether it's an Auto the RC or any other product, and come back to the video to let me know how things have gone. That's really important. The motors are the Spinny Boy 1405, 4800 kV. 3200 kV if you go for the 6S version. And the prop, depending upon which version you get, in my case, it's the HQ D63 quad bladed props. They offer several different versions. The version I have here is with the DJI 03 camera, as well as the VTX. The flight controller down there is the Auto the RC F7. It's a 40 amp all-in-one flight controller with, as I've said previously, some really clean silk screening, as well as heat sinks on the top and the bottom. The receiver right here in my case is the Express LRS in the 2.4 gigahertz version, but they also have the 915 megahertz version as well as the TBX Nano receiver. Carbon fiber plate is three millimeters thick. Motor post to motor post looks like it's about 112 millimeters. It weighs just a little over 196 grams. If you add a naked GoPro as well as a battery adapter as well as the screw, it weighs 250 grams, just about flat. They recommend cotter batteries on their webpage, but I don't hardly have any of those and most of them aren't very fresh. So I went with these GNB as well as this Beta FPV Lava battery. With the GNB 650, it weighs 265.85 grams. With the GNB 850, it weighs 283.47 grams. And with the Beta FPV Lava battery, it weighs 291.6 grams. Again, these are all 4S because I have the 4S version. I received an extra prop guard, but it doesn't list this as something that comes in the package. So maybe this isn't included in all packages. We have an accessory bag that has a bottom uh, sponge as well as a battery pad, as well as the screw that you need to put right through the front to mount your external HD camera. And speaking of HD camera, it comes with two additional mounts. And last but not least, it comes with one sheet of stickers. Okay, we're starting out with our slow sort of uh, what you might call flat flying or cinematic sort of flight. Uh, I don't like all calling them all cinematic flight because I think there's a a fair number of people that like to fly this particular t style of quad, you know, prop protected, and they aren't necessarily out there just trying to capture some sort of uh, scenic foot footage. It might be exploratory flight, it might be that the prop guards just give you an extra sense of safety um, or durability, reliability sort of factors. You know, that it can really vary on why somebody would want this sort of quad versus something without prop protection. Of course, as I mentioned, prop protection, it should be noted that, uh, yeah, anything without prop protection is going to outperform something with prop protection. It just comes down to weight and wind resistance. As I show there on the screen, I've got in the top left-hand corner the video recorded directly on the O3 VTX uh, that is with EIS turned on. And then in our main screen, we've got the goggle DVR which is recorded from the Goggles 2, which I think is one of the few ways that you can run the O3 as well as get the Betaflight OSD information. I think if you've got the original Goggles, the version 2 that work with the O3, you might need to have an alternate firmware on there in order to get the Betaflight OSD information. So we've got uh, in the bottom right hand corner, we've got our flight time, and then we've got some receiver information in the top right. In the top left, we have our throttle position. That S is an indicator of our throttle position. I don't know why it's S. And then in the lower left, we've got our battery voltage. Uh, top number is the average cell 
voltage as well as the full cell voltage of the battery below that and then we're amp draw across the bottom there uh, the wind is uh, 14 miles an hour but it doesn't really feel like 14 miles an hour of course we're in town uh, we've got houses and trees I kind of say that thing all the time that are protecting it uh, weather is measured kind of out in the open and in the clear um, I did fly this with an 850 and a GoPro a naked GoPro as I weighed it there on screen and with that 850 which was the beta FPV lava 850 I got five minutes and 15 seconds on average sometimes a little bit more sometimes a little bit less uh, without the GoPro on this particular day uh, the flight was uh, seven minutes and 49 seconds so substantial increase with just a little bit less weight, really, at all things considered. Uh, so if you're going to fly this with an 850 and no GoPro, you can look at getting about eight minutes of flight time. Uh, that, of course, depends upon your battery quality as well as the care of that battery over the course of its lifetime. I tested a 720, which is kind of the elongated 720 from G&B, and I got uh, five, points, uh, five minutes and seven seconds on average with that. That's funny number five minutes and seven seconds uh, it is worth noting that on that five minutes and seven seconds with the 720 that I did come in over 3.5 volts per cell most of the time it was 3.6 something uh, so probably could increase that flight time average a little bit there as well uh, on a 650 I got five minutes and 22 seconds this is of course all slow flat flying and uh, my 650 flights the battery would really under load you know when you're flying it would really sag down it's just kind of a smaller capacity for what this particular quad needs so oftentimes when I would disarm the battery voltage would come way up above 3.6 volts per cell oftentimes creeping up on 3.7 volts per cell so while I could get more flight time if I tried to end it right as I normally do with 3.5 volts it's also worth noting that on a 650 milliamp battery as well as the 720 to a degree uh, there's enough battery sag or draw that the voltage really drops down quite heavily so my recommended battery is going to be an 850 and that's what you'll see flown in this video so this flight goes on for seven minutes and 49 seconds this of course is without the gopro and then after this flight we'll move on to our faster more aggressive flight which i'll go ahead and spoil it now comes in at with again an 850 milliamp uh, beta fpv lava battery at about four minutes uh, on the 650 when I tried to fly that one faster I'd only get about two minutes and 30 seconds so it's very durable or very doable to get you know a, a decent I, I say decent because it's depending upon who you are and what your flight desires are you might be just going at pure flight time per battery uh, for my, myself you know and flying whoops a lot uh, I don't get too fussed about changing batteries if I get two and a half minutes of flight um, actually I tend to crash uh, when I'm flying in my normal manner at around two and a half minutes. So uh, have a crash fly back to me and swap out batteries. It's pretty normal when I'm flying inside. Uh, the temperature uh, on this particular day is 39 degrees, so creep it up on 40. But when we go to the faster flight, it's only going to be 37. Let's jump to the end. It's kind of a proof of concept on our flight time. All right, we're gonna come in for our flight. As you can see, the battery is kind of down there and it's screaming at us a little bit. And we come down on the ground, we disarm, we go back to the home screen to get a better reading on our battery voltage. And you can see that it's climbing back up, but we're not gonna get all the way back up to 3.5 volts per cell. It will read 14 volts eventually, but it's gonna stop at about 3.49 volts per cell. Okay, our faster flight, and this is, looks like an evening time flight, but it's kind of not. Uh, this was on a weekend, and it was about, well, it was between 4 and 5.30, which gets into kind of that evening time sort of uh, sunlight, but it's not necessarily evening time as far as the clock might say. Um, wind is nice and low, 3 miles an hour, actually one of those very rare days, and you saw in that punch above the chimney, I had a little bit of a wobble there. And so I go right back to it because I'm wanting to see what's going on. And the second time around, I don't see the wobble. So I have to kind of attribute that to something I'm doing because it was cold. I was outside uh, flying for quite a bit. 37 degrees is the temperature Fahrenheit, of course. And I do recall that my fingers were quite cold and I came inside. And uh, because this wasn't the weekend, our 13-year-old was chilling out, as they like to say. I think they like to say. And so I tried to put my hands on her, and she screamed and didn't like that very much. Um, she laughed and screamed. It wasn't as though it was torture for her. But I do remember my hands getting pretty cold. So I think I must have shook there a little bit at the top of that particular one. But as Derek said, and as I've said in the past, I've always been very pleased with um, the Auto the RC products that I have been uh, testing here on the channel. 
Uh, I shouldn't you know, phrase that in a way that makes it sound like I've tested hundreds of their products. Uh, this is the third product of theirs that I've had, and I've always been very happy with how they've flown. Uh, again, I won't overstate it. If you go for something that's just like this without prop protection, it will outperform anything that's got prop protection. That's just kind of how things work. There's um, added weight with the prop protection as well as just wind resistance, so it flies a bit differently. But out of the RC, as I say, and as Derek has already put in our comment section on the XI-20 Pro, they fly pretty nice. And I really can't complain about how they fly, and I think that out of the RC is, I think, I don't know this to be the fact, I think they were one of the first companies that came up with this prop protection design. That's what I've been told by two different sources, uh, not necessarily industry sources, but other sources on the internet, that they came up with this kind of low profile and the shape of the prop protection, and then it became kind of popular in the Far East, and we started to see it coming out from other companies as well. If you go back in this faster flight footage, and I do one of those maneuvers over the, the tree that's kind of horizontal, I came in real flat one time and we had a little bit of oscillation, and then I essentially do the same thing, and I don't have, uh, I don't come in as flat, but I have some oscillation. So that kind of highlights the technique that we need to uh, kind of hone ourselves into when it comes to flying different sorts of quads, that sometimes I do the technique really, really well, and it comes in all nice and smooth and other times I do it really poorly and it still comes out nice and smooth so it, it, it's uh, kind of a tribute to the quad and how it's tuned real well uh, this particular one I there's the technique isn't nearly as difficult as that it can be on others specifically uh, some of our smaller 75 millimeter cine whoops uh, you know they have the O3 on it they have a lot of technique required when it comes to recovering from your dives or vertical maneuvers when we're coming down as far as when we come out of the dive and how much throttle we apply it's it's something that you just have kind of have to get used to as you get used to flying this thing uh, but of course if you like to fly faster but you still want to fly flat this one can run around all the trees and act like you're in a flying position. I tried to lock in that orbit and I had it for about a pass. Uh, I tried a couple more passes and I got out of shape there. I think that orbits, while it's a relatively simplistic maneuver, they could be fairly challenging. Uh, getting them just right so you have that object that you're orbiting just off center and you know making it look like it's not moving and you're just moving around it. That's kind of a, a, a fun and challenging maneuver that uh, I like to do from time to time. Okay, our flight ended uh, four minutes and one second, uh, but our battery didn't come all the way back up to 14 volts or 3.5 volts per cell, unfortunately. So, 3.55 on the flight time. <laughs> One of the things I wanted to highlight before we get down to the nitty-gritty on the desk is I wanted to talk about the prop protection because many of you have probably heard me talk about flying our plastics when it was cold. And so it's been cold here. Matter of fact, today we got one of our biggest storms to date. They're, they're calling for as much as eight inches of snow over the next 24 hours. And schools are probably going to be canceled tomorrow as I record this. But so flying plastics in the cold, one of the worries that I've always had, specifically with the smaller sort of prop protection, you know, uh, our traditional tiny whoops. Flying them outside in the cold, that plastic can get brittle and break. Now, I was out there in 37 degrees for approximately 90 minutes, probably a little bit less than that. And I had several crashes during that course of the time of my flight session that was more aggressive. And the prop protection, it's fine. Uh, so take that for what it's worth. I'm still fairly cautious myself, but at least at 37 degrees Fahrenheit with crashes that I was having... It survived and it was fine and that was one other thing that in my experience with out of the RC and their prop protection that I really hadn't gotten a good fix on was temperatures and durability when crashing and like you'll see this isn't recorded before the flights this is recorded after the flights it held together fine which is something that I was curious about as I said but it also should for those of you that have weather like I have, give you some assurances that you can fly relatively safely in colder temperatures as well. Of course, we get much colder than that, who knows? So let's start off with the fact that, you know, some of you may be saying, well, why would I get the 25 over the 20? Well, one of the main things is it's just going to fly more aggressively. It's got more prop, so it's gonna produce more thrust at a, a very, very similar weight. This one is also going to be able to carry an external HD camera, whether it's a full-sized HD camera or a naked one like I flew and tested. It's going to be able to fly those for longer, more adequately, because it produces more thrust. 
that's why you would go for the bigger version. If you just want something small that flies well and it doesn't necessarily have to have the punch outs and the overall performance like you see here, the 20 is going to be very suitable. Matter of fact, inside the 20 will probably be uh, fine as well, but I wouldn't suggest flying that aggressively inside your home. So inside in that case of flying more aggressively would be uh, industrial sort of inside spaces, warehouses, stuff like that. Uh, you can cruise this one in your, in your house as well as the XI-20, but at the weight, I'd be worried about breaking any sort of furniture or uh, pictures, things that are breakable inside of our homes, uh, because this does carry uh, quite a bit of weight and it is carrying a 4S battery or a 6S battery, depending upon which version you decide to go for, if you go for one. As I mentioned, the durability with the prop protection, it's all right here and in place. Every Everything is good to go. You can see I've got dirt and whatnot stuffed up in there. Uh, they always go with this little sort of cat design. And one of the things I've talked about in the past is this canopy design does limit your camera angle. I think I could go up a little bit more than I showed you in the more aggressive flight uh, without getting any of this in there. It does give us the ability to angle this piece up inside of the canopy. And then you might see some of this uh, or a lot of this. I haven't tested that fully. I just put it at a camera angle that I like to fly at. And then I just go out and fly. You, that might be 20, 25 degrees. I'm not certain about that. I've never actually tried to measure the camera angle. I just go by looking at the camera and I go, yeah, it's about where I want it. And then I tighten the screws and go for it. Uh, battery mat is not sticky, but it's tack tacky. I uh, don't know if that's a good way of describing it. If you're not familiar with these, stuff won't stick to it. You know, like you can probably see that my finger's not sticking to it or anything like that. Uh, but it is rubberized. It is pretty thick. And with a toilet tanked, if you have a front crash, it's not going to allow the battery to, to go slamming into your camera. At least it shouldn't. Um, you would be most likely to lose your battery left or right. And speaking of the battery and crashing, uh, just like always, there's only one or two companies that make drones that I'm aware of that do this. So one of the things I suggest, which you don't see done on this one, is to take a zip tie and just strap it down to this arm. Uh, if you do happen to have a really bad crash and you go tumbling and the battery tries to come out sideways and... It's a rare circumstance, but it, I think it's worth adding the zip tie right here around this arm in order to protect ourselves from this pulling off of our ESC and hurting that ESC, or worse, damaging it to where it's not even repairable. Uh, we have 3D prints uh, for our antenna, our T-style antenna, as well as our O3 antenna, as well as the obviously the canopy. Those are all the locations that we have prints. Uh, you can see, hopefully, right down here, Right down in there, they've taken the O3 camera and they've wrapped it around that standoff, that metal standoff right there, to where you uh, you have what you need to camera angle, but yet it's not going to get into prop line. That was something I was looking for after the last review. And right on here, we also have these plastic sleeves. Uh, you might want to wrap some electrical tape around here if that seems to be coming loose in any way. It's close enough to the motor mount. I don't think it would. And I don't see a bunch of slack up in here from our motor to where I'm too concerned about even this coming loose and then getting into our prop line. I think that's something that they put on there just for a clean build. Oh, I just noticed another print. See that print right there, that strap? Got a little 3D print that holds our O3 camera cable. So they've really thought about just about every little safety precaution on this thing. On this particular one, I think getting into the SD card is going to be challenging. It's lined up directly with this prop protection and I don't think there's enough of a gap to where we could get our SD card in there. So that might be the one thing, the one drawback that I see about this one that the XI-20 didn't have. My remembrance of the 20 was that you could access both the USB port for activation and pulling off the recordings, as well as the SD card. This one, we can't quite get to the SD card, at least uh, I wasn't able to. Um, some more prints that I forgot to mention. Uh, right here to give us a little distance between the bottom plate as well as the stack. That could, if you don't go with the O3 version, if you go with a different version, you could find some slight variance in the build as well as the weight. Something else that I noticed here is that they, they keep the uh, antennas fairly low on their particular builds. And I don't think there's any reason other than it just it cleans things up and kind of makes a level flat top. That's just my guesstimation. That's not an engineering sort of information that I asked them about. That's just me speculating because it keeps everything nice and flat across the top. I think that's why the antenna is in this location, which could mean that the antenna is less likely to take more damage. Screws are all hex screws. I didn't find any Phillips or straight screws. Everything is hex like 
one tool needed for all your field repairs, except for maybe a soldering iron, stuff like that. I didn't highlight it, but of course it's got a capacitor on there. Uh, same capacitor that we saw in others. It looks like a 35 volt, 470 microfarad capacitor. I'm not quite certain with that brand of capacitor where they're getting those because that color scheme doesn't really stand out to me that it's calling out a particular name brand. So I think Out of the RC makes a quality, fun flying product, especially if you're looking at the Sin Whoops. They do have one, I think it's one quad that doesn't have prop protection, but I think it's 3.5 inch. It might even be a four or five inch. I'm not looking at it right at the moment. Uh, so if you want to try an Out of the RC product and you don't want prop protection, I think there's just the one to choose from. Uh, I will have links down in the video description to this as well as the page that they have all the different versions that come up if, in case you want analog or walk snail, something else other than the HD Zero or excuse me, the DJI video system. I'll have that down in the video description. If I have any coupon codes or anything like that that I can get out of them to save you some extra cash, I'll put that code uh, down in quotations marks uh, also down in the video description. But like Derek, I have good experiences with Auto the RC products. And if you can afford them, they do ship out of China. So depending upon where you're at from China, your wait time could be mm, a little bit longer than it would be if you bought from the shop down the road. So something else to consider. But uh, I, I have not had nary a negative comment from what anyone and Derek thank you again for taking the time to come back to the channel to leave that comment about the XI-20 I appreciate that and anybody out there who might have an XI-25 Pro I would be certainly uh, curious on what your experiences and your thoughts on it are versus maybe other experiences that you've had if you have any comments questions suggestions or otherwise please let me know in the comment section below I appreciate your time thanks for watching